I'm John Banyuls, a grade 2 EAL teacher at the International School of Phnom Penh. I just redesigned and taught a grade 2 simple machines unit with technology enhancements. I grafted some ISTE standards onto the unit. I wanted students to use a variety of media to communicate what they found out with peers. They would research unit vocabulary online. They would learn how computers can simulate the real world. Students were going to experiment with simple machines and forces. They would learn that complex machines are combinations of simple machines. I am an EAL teacher first, so let's talk about our language objectives. In this unit, students were going to learn and practice oral and written explanations. Students would learn how to read and write procedures. Students were going to become proficient with unit vocabulary. Due to my job, I really had to focus on these language objectives, but the achievement of the other goals would, I hoped, feed into this language development. In grade two, we have iPads at a ratio of one for two students. On these iPads, I wanted to introduce an app called Tiny Bob's Simple Machines. This app would allow students to do self-directed, exploratory, simulated experiments with simple machines. The app works in conjunction with motion sensors in the iPads, transforming vertical, horizontal, or circular movements of fingers into simulated forces. These forces in turn cause movement in the app's simple machines. In the computer lab, our ed tech coach, Mr. Matt Dolmont, was going to use an app called Contraption Maker with the PCs. This app was more game-based and presented students with direction in the form of challenges to create a machine to do a silly or impossible task. I would also use Google Forms and YouTube videos to pre-assess students and help them tune in. Next, students would use Google Slides to create procedures and explanations for team or partnered experiments. We would also be teaching students to screenshot and label images using the line tool and text boxes in Google Slides. We scaffolded these presentation templates with sentence frames nestled in the speaker notes section. This is one way I plan differentiation into the unit. Students also performed small research investigations using Google Images Search and Google Translate to link visuals, audio, text, and mother tongue translations. To store all our ideas in a central place, I plan to use Padlet. Padlet also presented a differentiation option because students could type responses, video themselves saying a response, take a photo of a drawing they had done, or include an image they found on the internet to help improve the clarity of their response. students worked in pairs to discuss and answer questions on a Google form about two films that involved simple machines. Students began to watch and think and discuss some great thinking with these prompts. It's so cool. Is it cool? Yeah. They did it. They, they did all of this in one try. In, in one try you think they did it? No, they had to do it like a few tries. But we hit our first stumbling block. Slow Wi-Fi. Next time, I would watch movies together on screen and have students rejoin partners to do surveys on the Google Form. We then took a look at the data in the graphical representation Google Forms provides, looking for patterns and asking questions about our responses. Later, students worked on an analog think and draw task with some of the more concrete vocabulary. After this pre-think, they chose whether to use Google Images Search or Google Translate to find out more information about these words. From here, students began to explore simple machines by playing with toys in their classes. Is, is that easy or difficult? Easy. I call this a lifting uppers. A lifting uppers. For my EAL students, I created and shared a Padlet for each simple machine that had sentence starters for the Think, Puzzle, Explore thinking routine. Students combined new vocabulary with the sentence frames and typed responses or made videos to post depending on what they felt more comfortable doing. I could explore fully in Chrome. I think a pulley works with electricity. Where is a pulley in the world? I think this object is for pulling stuff up. 
At this point in the inquiry, students worked in pairs to write procedures about how to get an egg safely from a chair to the floor without breaking it, using some kind of simple machine. Students reported this on a Google Slides presentation with partners. From here, I introduced students to Simple Machines, the TinyBot app. I and my teaching assistants moved between pairs and asked pointed questions about observations, variables, and results. We also asked students what differences they saw between playing with the real Simple Machine toys and the simulated machines on the iPads. Where's, where, if we're talking about, what does this say actually? Oh, my Hey. What are these called when we talk about procedures? Labels. Labels, right? Why does that help us understand as we do this? So we get information. Yeah, because um, the, um, that thing came. What's that thing called? The fulcrum, the fulcrum <laughs> came behind and um, we are doing it more. Is harder. the fulcrum further or closer? Further from or closer to the load? Sorry. Um, um, further. Yeah, if, and if we make the full time all the way and Sorry, no. over here, it will go not that high. I overheard one student describe his contraption maker machine in a way that completely illustrated achievement of the simulation's objective. So can you tell us about that machine that you made? I made a ski jump out of springboards and dynamite, and it would not work in the real world. Why wouldn't it, it work in the real world? Because if you, if you stand on top of the dynamite, one piece of dynamite, uh, and on your sled or ski thingy, and then it blows up. I don't think you'll survive it. Oh, it. I don't think it will work in the real world, but it did work on the computer. Okay, and, and like you couldn't test this in real life, right? No. Okay. You'd have to use a robot. You'd have to use like a robot to test it. So when you tested it on the computer, did you test it like again and again? Yeah. I also interviewed and surveyed students about their learning and what they enjoyed most in the unit. Student responses showed that Contraption Maker had tremendous appeal due to its game-based interface where challenges could be set, such as helping a character make a far too long ski jump. This reinforced the idea for me that gamification is a good strategy for engaging students in inquiry. Contraption Maker. Contraption Maker. It's fun and it's about our unit and I learn a lot and how to make, make stuff with it. You could like um, try um, to build the machine and you could explore. Because uh, you, you could build things and, and it gives you a challenge. Computer is much better because you can tell the computer what to do and you can save it in real life. You gotta stick it and you can break so easily. I just like it more because you can like just put things that you want in it and you don't have to like if you're in real life and you have to get stuff and that stuff but if it's already on there then you can just like take it. In the computer you can play a game with it before because it's way to be thick and it let me be creative. Oh, let me be creative. Yeah, very important. Was my integration of technology into this unit mostly substitution, augmentation, modification, or redefinition? I think for most of the technology usage in this unit, I hit the augmentation and modification bands. Using the Simple Machines apps could have been seen as augmentation, as simulations increase the number of experiments the students can do. You can only do one or two hands-on experiments in a lesson. Contraption Maker and the Simple Machines app allowed students to do tens of experiments in the space of 15 or 20 minutes. With the Google Slides procedure writing, I believe we reached a modification level over what might traditionally have been a writing task, complete with planning, drafting, revising, and rewriting. With Google Slides, students included photographs of themselves experimenting, they labeled items, and they shared their files on the class blog. The use of Padlets might have represented a redefinition. Students engaged in written or multimedia discussions at their own pace. These discussions served as a record of our learning and will remain posted on our class blog for the rest of the year. This is in contrast to what might have just been a class discussion in years past. I hope you can try this unit and get back to me about what you and your students experience. If you enjoyed this video, please find me on YouTube, Twitter, and at my blog, Tuning in Chaos. Thanks for watching.